When we purchased our Lotus Samira around two weeks ago, it was purchased at a substantial discount and there's good reasons for that. There's issues with the car. Today we're going to talk about what those issues are and how much we paid for the car. Today's video is presented in partnership with Hampson Auctions, one of the UK's leading classic, performance and supercar auction houses. Their next sale takes place on the 22nd of September at the magnificent Bowlesworth Castle in Cheshire. So we purchased the car with three major issues. So those three major issues provided quite a substantial discount from the what was going to be the forecourt retail price. Now that's not the new retail price, it's the forecourt retail price. Number one, the car has the split windscreen issue. You probably can't see that very well on camera. We'll try and show it a bit with some footage. In effect, the way the two panes of glass are, are sandwiched together, the back pane of glass has got split when it was installed to the car. And there's a crack down the top of the windscreen down to where the rear view mirror is fixed. Now that's a fairly common problem for the mirrors and that is gonna be fixed under warranty. The second issue I can't really show you, it's the climate control resistor. So in effect, our climate control with regards to the air conditioning is either full on or full off. And that makes for some interesting driving, especially as we put around 900 miles in the previous couple of weeks on the car. And that's meant it's been quite hot weather where we've been. So we've had to keep turning it up and turning it down all the time. In effect, switching it on, switching it off from full volumes on the air conditioning. So that's been quite interesting. But again, that's going to be resolved under warranty and is another well-known issue. I'll give you a brief prelude <laughs> example of the air conditioning issue we've got where this resistor has failed. So the air conditioning is off at the moment. It's a fairly warm day, but we don't desperately need air con. But I'll just turn it on. And so, so you can hear it there. It's on full blast now. Now it doesn't sound too intrusive. It's not at its fullest motor power, but it's showing full power with regards to the adjustment I've had to do to switch it on. If I turn it down, then, I, then it just turns off fully. I can't have it on part way. So I've run full, like that, or off. There's no middle ground, which is, which is a pain in the ass. The final third issue is to do with the paintwork. And this is again, a common problem with these Lotus and mirrors. But whereas it affected lo other Lotus and mirrors on the doors, it's only affected ours on the rear engine cover. So only on this section of paintwork. And how it's shown itself is it's evident with bubbling on the engine cover here. And that's because of a reaction with the composite materials and the undercovers paintwork, the, the primer and the top coat paintwork. In effect, it causes a reaction, causes bubbling. And again, this is being covered under warranty. So this whole engine cover section is going to be resprayed. Now, when we had the car PPF recently, if you haven't seen that video, then I'll put a link in the description below. It wasn't fully PPF'd and there's a good reason for that. Number one, because it didn't need full PPF, it just needed a track pack to get coverage of the main issues that are going to be affected by stone chips or that could be affected by stone chips. And secondly, because we knew this panel had issues and of course we couldn't put PPF on this panel knowing that there's paint defects because then we'd have to get it PPF'd again afterwards, which is just a crazy situation. PPF is not cheap. That was quite a good approach. And you can see the bubbling elsewhere on this engine cover. For some reason, it has just affected this engine cover, which is a good thing, but why, we don't know. It's, as I said, it's a reaction with the composite material and the paintwork, but I guess only Lotus will know. We know the rest of the paintwork is fine on the car because when it was in for PPF, they go through a process of decontaminating the car, and that involves multiple washes of the car and claying it. And when you're claying the car, you get very up close and personal with the paintwork, and that would show and, and provide evidence to them whether or not there's issues with the paintwork anywhere else and we know that there isn't they only reported that the rear engine cover was affected so that's a very good thing now with these issues these three issues so you've got the 
the resistor for the air climate control you've got a front windscreen split and you've got this engine cover that needs repainting whether they'll repainting or whether they'll replace it i don't know whether the two all those three issues have been signed off already um, because the car's been assessed. They've been signed off already by Lotus and been qualified as being resolved or will be resolved by warranty. So it's just a case of me liaising with Lotus and make sure that the assessment that was performed um, down at South End on Sea where I collected the car at Safwat Cars for the Lotus dealer there to provide that assessment to my local Lotus dealer, which is actually Rybrook Lotus so that this work can be performed locally to me. But because this work would have been performed at some quite substantial period of time in the future, that didn't really work for the dealership because they would have had to hold on to the car. They couldn't sell the car, obviously, with these issues. So it would have been causing quite a delay. And of course, dealerships do not want to hold on to cars because they're losing money. They've paid out for the car already. Um, they don't want to lose money on cars. They want to get that turnaround very quickly because the car could depreciate in that time frame, and therefore they're losing money all the time. So the owner of Safwat Cars kindly cut a deal with me where I managed to get this car at a substantial discount. Keep watching to the end of the video and we'll go into exactly how much I paid. White van just pulled out in front of me for no reason whatsoever. He saw me coming and pulled out in front of me. You can't miss this car. What a complete clown. So first of all, apologies for the car being quite dirty. There's a good reason for that. When a car is first PPF, the PPF has to settle. And in between that time of settling, you shouldn't wash the car. And any good PPF installer provides a free decontaminizing rewash or new wash following the PPF having been installed around two weeks after the installation. And as I say, in between that period, you shouldn't wash the car yourself because that could cause a problem with the adhesion of the PPF to the car. So this car has done 900 miles with our ownership in the past two weeks. And since the PPF was installed, we've done around 500 and 550 miles in it, 500 to 600 miles in the car. So quite a bit of mileage. And so the car's got quite dirty. Because the car's going for its first assessment wash following the installation of the PPF in around three to four days time, we haven't washed the car. So it will be washed for the first time by the installers. So moving on to the issues the foibles of the car we've done quite a lot of motorway driving so we've got to know the car quite well and we've got to realize a few of its foibles first of all i'd like to say love the car what other car can you get of this standard of this performance you can't really not with this standard of build quality this heritage this brand heritage and this performance you just can't it's a no-brainer in my mind. The value that these are on, on auto trade is just crazy. So some of the foibles. First of all, and I've mentioned this before, the position of the cup holders is absolutely pointless. It's, we've, we've been putting cups in there been, when we've been doing our long journeys. And they just, you know, we've had to put small cups in there just so I can still change gear properly because if you haven't got small cups in there they're just too intrusive and I'm doing this with my hands to try <laughs> so I can change gear not such of a problem with the DCT models with the i4s with the AMG motored cars but a major problem with the manuals so this is just pointless secondly touch screens I know I've mentioned this before and I've done a whole video on touch screens put a link in the description below if you haven't seen that video they're such a dangerous entity. Your attention is taken away, and your attention is distracted away to the functionality of these touch screens, and the menus, and the options, irrespective of how clear the CarPlay is. The CarPlay on the Amira is actually quite good and integrates very well. We can use Waze, we use Waze all the time with the integration of CarPlay, which is fantastic. But to operate it, uh, my, my son is always in the passenger seat with us, so it makes it a lot easier because he, he performs the operations through the, through the interface. But otherwise, your attention is distracted. That is dangerous, it's not a good thing. But I realize obviously that's not just for the Amira. Now what is probably integrated in with the Amira, but integrating with other cars as well, is bloody parking assist. 
parking assist, I assume it's integrated on all other modern cars, you cannot switch the bugger off. You can only switch it off for it for your current driving session and then switches back on again. Or we haven't found how to switch it off fully. If you know how to switch off parking assist on a Lotus Amira for good so it never comes back on again, please let us know in the comments below because we'd really like to know because at the moment, every single time we start the car, we're having to switch off parking assist because it goes beep, 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 beep all the time whenever we're near anything within any close proximity. It's friggin' annoying. What other things are avoidable? Well, I'm struggling now, guys, because I really like the car. <laughs> it's really the cup holders. That's the biggest problem. I say you, you could say this flipping flap for the start button. It's spring-loaded and keeps dropping back down again, and you can't quite fit your finger through to start the car and stop the car without lifting it up. It's just a gimmick. It's a gimmick to try and represent a Lamborghini, and it just doesn't work. So I would prefer that not to be there at all but it is what it is, it's just, just a small foible. Now to talk about a few of the positive things, just a few of the positive things, because we go into the full ownership experience as we gain more experience with driving the car um, and as we do more videos. But loving the actual driving position, so the position is really great, loving the steering wheel, I know it's a bit quirky with its shape um, and some people say it's a bit big, but I've actually got big hands, so it doesn't cause me a problem. But I love the driving position. I love the performance of the car. This car has a sport suspension um, and I always wanted a sport suspension. I didn't want any soft nuances at all. Now I know the touring suspension isn't too soft anyway because it's a Lotus, but I just didn't want that. I want the car to be agile and performant and I'm willing to accept that the car may not be as compliant, but I'd rather have that directness and, that, that, and the car being able to perform flatter around corners um, than having it too wallowing and too soft. In all the mileage we've done, we've had a lot of reactions from other people. And it's all good, nothing negative. With the Ferrari, we got a hell of a lot of, of negativity about the car. And of course about the number plate as well, but a lot of negativity about the car. This, people just seem to have an affinity with it. They love Lotuses. Now, just to say in context again, this car had those three major problems and the dealer wanted to get the car sold rather than hold on to the car until Lotus had resolved those problems under warranty. The warranty has been assessed, the warranty issues have been assessed, and that information is currently being passed through to my local Lotus dealer, so I can get those issues re resolved locally to me. And because of that, the car was going to be sold for around £66,000. Remember, it only had 800 miles on the clock. So it was pretty much a brand new car. Nasty bumpy section here. So the car was going to be sold for around £66,000. And because the dealer wanted the car gone, I got the car for £62,000. Now at the time, that was the cheapest, lowest mileage Amira on the market. And I'm happy to take that on, I'm, take, I'm happy to take that discount on the basis that we can get that work performed and it's signed off with our Lotus dealer. It has been signed off already, but it's just transferring the assessment from the South End on Sea local Lotus dealership to our local Lotus dealership. Of course, I'm gonna walk you through the remediation of all those issues step by step so that you'll know how it should go forward um, with your cars if you have the same problems. Currently driving it around some of our usual driving roads and the car's a dream. Just absolutely love it. The car's pretty much as agile as my Ferrari was and I think it even performs flatter through the corners to be honest. The steering is pretty much as fast as the 458 was and as much as fast as any supercar that I've, I've driven really, to be honest. The six-speed gearbox is, is great. When we have it on the motorway, when we're driving on the motorway any, any longish distances, we close the valves on the exhaust so we don't get that drone because it can, the exhaust can be a bit droney without the valves closed, but that closes that right out and you don't get that drone. With my current driving experience of this car, I would say that most supercar owners aren't getting away from me in this car. This car is so agile. Yes, it's not going to be as fast accelerating in a straight line as a lot of supercars, although it's only about eight tenths slower than my 458 on acceleration. This is not to 62 in around 4.2 to 4.4 seconds. My 458 was about 
3.4 seconds, 3.5 seconds. So it's not that much slower. And going around the corners, it will definitely hold its own with any supercar. So I don't think anybody's getting away from me in this car. And that's, I'm gonna probably annoy a lot of supercar owners by saying that. And I'm probably gonna annoy a lot of supercar owners when I'm driving with them because they won't be able to get away from this lovely little yellow Lotus. And I shall really enjoy that. I shall take pride in that because I've always loved the Lotus brand. I know, it's Mr. Gear there. I know a lot of you will think that I was berating the Lotus Amira. I wasn't, I was berating Lotus. Very different thing. I always loved the cars. And I always wanted a Lotus Amira, even though Lotus caused me major problems with buying my new car. But hell, at the end of the day, it saved me a lot of money because my car that I had in all, had on order was gonna cost me 82,000 pounds on the road. 82,000 pounds, they're now around 95,000 pounds on the road. I bought this car for 62,000, so I saved 20,000 pounds for the sake of a year and 800 miles, because this car was purchased with around 800 miles on the clock. So I've saved around 20,000 pounds by waiting. It's a no-brainer, guys, it's a no-brainer.